Good day, everybody. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, shut her down. Good day, everybody. It's Jerry from Backcountry Ranching. Welcome to Struggle Town. Last couple days, I've not been feeling it. Getting tired of turning wrenches, and I need to get this done. We're going to start tackling the front suspension of this Jeep. we got a bunch of projects, like I said in the last video, we got to take care of. I need to uh, change out the new springs. There's one issue that is might affect this might be a real pain in the butt is i got some teraflex speed bumps in the front so there's going to be some issues of trying to get the control arm springs out that's to be determined first thing we gotta do is jack her up get the tires off power fist to the rescue I talk about Struggle Town. Years ago when I bought this house, I never thought I'd be doing projects to this extent in it. And kind of regret. I wish I would have hindsight. Bought a larger garage. But Struggle Town is I'm trying to jack this up. But the jack handle keeps wanting to hit the old toolbox there. The struggle is real. In order to get these springs out, sway bar links have to come off. This rock jock's coming off anyways. Shock bolt. These falcons are coming out. Still got a set of new ones in that box. We need to get the clearance to drop the axle down so we clear the spring past that speed bump. These uh, rechargeable lights I got from Princess Auto are still doing its trick. You get a couple hours runtime, basically couple hours before it's dead so you have an hour of light before uh lights really starts fading but when you just kind of need a light in an upper position it works all right gonna have to resort to air tools now since the uh milwaukee died the three eights i got the air cat 1055 th hopefully should bust that nut free air tools will last virtually almost forever or electric tools Already starting to fail me. Really ultimately depends how seized this is. Oh yeah, air cat just just spinning that on. I gotta get on that little piece there. Yeah. I'm just gonna zip tie this. Gotta get that shock bolt out. Weasel the air cat in with a little tiny extension. There we go. So what we got is the weight of the shock. That is the force of the shock going down that is preventing that bolt from coming out. There we are. So that's going to give me a little bit of drop here. So I'm going to have to drop this quite a bit down. Hopefully in order to try to squeeze that out. Because I'm not exactly sure how that speed bump's put in there. There's a collar up there. If I loosen that collar, I might be able to tap the speed bump down. I'm not exactly sure. Going to have to uh, adjust that situation when I get there. I got to go to the other side now. You gotta do the same thing, except you gotta remove the track bar as well. The track bar will hold the axle in place and won't allow me to drop it down as far as I needed to. So this is where the fun part comes in. This sway bar link obviously is blocked by the track bar. And luckily for me, that is going to come out pretty easy. I did spray it with WD-40, not really to be a penetrant, but just as a lubricant for it to come out. Theoretically, once I pull this out, uh, I was going to say this was should just drop down, but I guess it doesn't. I thought it would. 
So this is where the fun begins. The steering stabilizer goes through the track bar. It does have an adjustable track bar, which is nice, which means I don't need to buy a new one. If we're seized in the bushing, or seized on the bolt end, or nut end, it's not gonna be a good time. No, sir. So we're gonna do the old uh, mallet on the wrench trick. See if I get some swing. Need the. Oh, yeah. This is why I'm saying welcome to Struggle Town. As you can see, that's already starting to round out. Oh, I can't even get a wrench in behind there. Get on that. At least try to bust it free. That's not going to happen. Unfortunately, but you can see right there. Problem is, when you're using an open end wrench and you beat on it with a mallet, it spreads. I can't get a full grip on it. There's only one thing that might save me is some uh, PB blaster here. Just to soak the crap out of everything. And hope it over time it frees itself up. I do have other options. I could drop the track bar at that end. So we'll have to mess with this, but I really think the steering stabilizer shot too. There seems to be a lot of play. One thing I do know for sure, when I drop the bolt for the upper track bar, I'll know if it sees in the bushing. We're already starting off not on a very good foot. It makes me wonder what the control arms are going to be like. It would suck if all of them were seized in the bushing. Garmin's. Are you looking for belly rubs? Is that what you want? Mm, do you want some belly rubs? Mm, do you? Mm, do you want some belly rubs? Mm, do you? Belly rubs. Ah, attack me. Ah, the murder button. The murder button. Garmin's. Well, welcome to the sadness because it never ends. It's another set of days off in the garage. Last week earlier in this video a few seconds ago I was uh, trying to deal with that shock bolt in the track bar realized that was seized I did order a new shock new steering stabilizer I should say and Terraflex did update that model I'll talk a little bit about that but after further looking at it today I think I'm gonna have to order a new track bar as well most likely gonna have to sacrifice it because things aren't looking good all right this is my first time using the GoPro 11. I just bought it. So in the updated Terraflex steering stabilizer, it doesn't have this ball end here. It has like a bushing, so this would just slide off, which would eliminate this whole issue that I'm dealing with. Because most likely, I can, I'm gonna have to cut this off so I can get a socket on, possibly, hopefully, maybe that might bust it free. I think, uh, like the shocks, once it's in there and it's seized, and it's broken that's it look at that rust scale paint just peeling right off so i know this is not going to come off i'm not going to be able to get the springs out so i need to get the track bar off at the opposite end so this is a track bar mount right here and this will give me a good indication how the rest of the bolts are going to be in the front hopefully we're not going to have any issues and this is going to come out pretty easy we're about to find out all right Self positioned here. That's a good sign. I came out. This probably won't unseize or come out because the other end is seized. Uh, is it? Can I physically move it? Uh, I need to get this out of here to know for sure. Hard to tell. Yeah, flex is definitely in the bushing. Now, it's no real 
good place for those jack stands because I got the Annie rocks. Oh, I'm gonna try to position them underneath here. Got one underneath there. Looks like it's gonna sit pretty solid. Well, it's the moment of truth. I can lift her up, release the jack stands. See if I'm gonna have enough clearance to get out past these bump stops. I think I'm gonna be good. Squeeze them out. All right, that's one side out. I was kind of worried. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be the same for this side too. This should. Oh, I got the steering and stuff in there. It's gonna be a little bit more of a hassle, I think. I think I'll be able to fish her out though. Twirl it out. There we go. We're out. Well, this should be interesting. They are quite a bit, quite a bit longer. Uh, the struggle is always so real. I actually went in the user and I thought I'm not actually on the perch yet. I gotta get it on the perch. I need to get it in. And the spring needs to sit. In its little spot. Uh, uh, come on. You're so close to being there. Come on. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Come on. There we go. This side here should be a breeze. Just gotta do a twisting motion that's why I did the other one and you kind of kind of works that spring up uh, I see where the struggle is real now that side came way down well there's a couple ways that you can tackle this one is to use a spring compressor which is a death wish the second is a tool that everybody should have in their garage is a porta power. You can take a porta power, put it on the axle against the frame, push down against the opposite weight, hopefully get this part down so I can squeeze it in. Because what happens with the spring in the other side, the spring pushes down, this part of the axle comes up. So with the porta power, I'm pushing it down. I should clear. All right, we're hooked up. As you can see, I'm taking it down. gonna be easier to show you this and then explain to you I spent probably the last hour trying to figure out what the heck is going on passenger spring is fine driver spring is not but I had to look beyond to understand what's going on got the old flashlight here so you can see I got the spring in it's underneath its own weight got the jack stands underneath and you can see that she's sitting pretty straight the uh, speed bump is somewhat centered. Now we're gonna come around to the driver's side here. Now you can see the spring 
kind of has a curvature like that and you can see that the speed bump is butted up against the spring so I thought okay the spring's not sitting in the perch properly but as you guys know the spring has to sit I'll get a light on there it has to sit in a notch in there so it's sitting in the notch spring is sitting where it's got to be what's going on you know cycle the suspension I dropped the suspension tried shifting the spring around then I had to think outside the box and the reason for that is is that you know it was aftermarket lower control arms so what I want you guys to see is look how much thread is showing on that control arm right there probably gonna be like uh, half an inch of thread maybe so we're coming back to this side here and look at all much thread I got there I probably got like an inch and a quarter maybe so an inch and a quarter come back over here push this axle forward would set that spring exactly where it's supposed to be why this one's shorter I don't know but when it all goes back together they're all going to be the same length I think it's time to shut her down. Another fucking beer time. Let's grab one of these beers right down here. Red Ale Ridge Walk. Rich, red, and robust. 5% alcohol. All right, you know what time it is? It's motherfucking beer time. That's what time it is. Fernie Brewing Company is pretty good. Yeah, I tell you right now, the struggle bus came to town. It did some damage, that's for sure. We're going to look at new steering stabilizer, most likely. A new track bar. Because it seems that that uh, all in one bolt thing that TerraFlex uses is seized. For some reason, the uh, driver side control arm is about one inch shorter. So, my axle this whole time has been kind of dog tracking in a sense. So, I'm going to have to straighten everything out, make it the same length, double check it, double check the steering. I'm telling you, it's a shit show. But once it's all finished, I'm going to be happy. I'm ending the video now because the control arms is coming off next and uh, the struggle bus could come back and kick my ass, that's for sure. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Motherfucking beer time. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Hello, baby girl. What are you doing? I know, it's so cold out, and you just want to cuddle up on the couch and sleep on your blankets and don't like me touching you. I know, well, I know. You're so funny that way. You only like to cuddle when it's bedtime, Carmen's. I know. I know. Am I in your space? Do you want me to go?